Yeah. So what I want to do is I'm gonna I want to go real quick through the chapters that I have your songs on. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, and I reread those ones. Or, I just referenced them. I was like, okay, cool. That's the chapter about that. So the first chapter I used "Settle Down," yeah. um, which is a pretty. It's like the first like intense chapter. Yeah, it's a heavy chapter. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's basically a suicide note. Yeah, <laughs> um, which I love the way you did it. I love the honesty in there. It's like, man, it, it's so real, you know. I gave my things away. I called the people that I only see on other days. This next year is gonna burn a hole in me. I gave my things away. I called the people that I only see on holidays. This next year is going to burn a hole in me. The Times Square Renaissance is not the Hotel Chelsea. All the comfort that the original Chelsea lacked, and none of the history. So much has happened in the years since that disgusting night at that disgusting hotel. Maybe that night was my rock bottom. How far away from it am I now? This hotel is nicer, but the brain is still just as messy. My blood just as poisoned. Actually, more so tonight. Adderall, Xanax, Scotch. I'm still lonely, still depressed, but I don't have $300 to spare tonight. Even if I did, the one girl I want here tonight writes for magazines. She's not advertised in the back pages of them. I've been here before. This might get morbid. I've never been deliberately suicidal. There was a short period when I was in the army. I really didn't care to live because I was so miserable that I abused pills, and in the real way, not the fun way I do now. I've always thought that I love my family too much to ever cause them the pain that comes from suicide. So, while I really didn't care if I died in my sleep, I wasn't trying or hoping for it. I just wanted to sleep. I never set out to kill myself. My ego probably deserves some credit there. I know how much potential I have. I just have to figure out how to reach it. One of the things I talk about in the Settle Down chapter is um, about how like I've never felt deliberately suicidal but you know I've definitely fucked around with things enough to where I could have died and exactly yeah. um but what keeps me from being deliberately suicidal is my ego thinking that like wow. I have something to say yeah, exactly and that like and knowing I the know, potential I like that, that yeah. I have exactly um but it's so hard for me to like do what like I like in a way, reset. you're too arrogant to ever kill yourself. Exactly, because like people <laughs> need to that. hear what that, I what I have amazing. to say, right? And I love that. I so say, that's great. I, I wanted to ask you about any kind of similar feelings of that. Where like you know there are those tones in your music of like feeling suicidal or having too much to deal with. Yeah. Um, what keeps you going? Yeah. And like, um, and like you've already said, like you know you you feel like art should hurt and yeah. that you need to get it out there no matter what. Exactly. Which is kind of similar, but do you see it as like an ego thing or like a, like a value of what you have to put out there or a potential thing? Or um, how do you see it? Wow, what keeps yeah. you going? Wow, that is really cool. I do love that concept of like, yeah, your ego gets in the way of suicide. <laughs> but <laughs> like that's a really cool concept just in general. But I, I don't know, I'd say like, I think everyone in their human mind, like, they're lying to themselves if they say that they haven't had, you know, kind of suicidal thoughts or that's where the human mind travels. Like, it travels through the dark and it travels through the light. And you need to let it do that in a lot of ways. And to say, like, I've never thought of suicidal thoughts, I think that's just, like, kind of... Like, society tries to, like, you know, kind of diminish the whole depression and suicide things. And I think everyone has these thoughts. And I, I think uh, to think that no one is having these thoughts is crazy. Like, to think that we're alone. Like, And I think that's, that's what's, like, you asking me, like, are you alone? And it's like, we all, you know, have these thoughts. And we all find ways to get through it. And I'm grounded now, yeah, because I have my daughter and because I have all this stuff. And I, I would never, ever even think to yeah. do that. But everyone has those moments where it's like, it's just too much or everything just feels like nothing, you know? You have these moments of numbness where you're like, I don't even care about anything. And that's just your brain. I mean, the chemicals in your brain. I mean, we all go through the feelings of human nature. And the way we are as humans, we just have to you know, combat that and just try to fight through it. And I think uh, I think it's good you have an outlet and it's good, like you say, your ego, but like your craft, it, 
it gives you so much hope and it gives you so much love and I think we all have these things that fulfill ourselves that make us feel better and you need an outlet like that to push it all through and like with my music when I I always say I'm so lucky that I get to just scream about my issues. Like, I get to scream about the shit. I, I have these books, like you have your book, and I get to yell it to hundreds of people every yeah. night, and they, they yell it back to me, and that's kind of my therapy. It's like, you gotta get it out there. You, got, you gotta let that air out. You, yeah. gotta, you gotta tell people, you gotta, you gotta show those emotions so that you can feel something in the end yeah. of it, you know? No, it's like I told you, like, if I, if I could play guitar better, this would have been an album. Because I, like, know, I, yeah. I, I, the, my first experience writing my feelings was yeah. as the lead singer of bands. Exactly. I, but I was just a singer. And I can play guitar, yeah. but I, I'm not good at all. So, like, yeah, you have songs. a chapter in the book where you kind of explain that. Yeah. Really. yeah. <laughs> and so, I mean, that's what's gotten me through life is yeah. music. And so I wish I could put this into music. Exactly, uh, yeah. But also, like... I don't, I don't feel bad about that. Like, yeah. I, I feel really great about yeah. this. Yeah, on the other and side, I wish I could put my emotions into a book. Like, I've always wanted to write a book. Yeah, it's just grass like, is always greener. Yeah, we always, <laughs> wanted, we always wanted to do so much with our feelings and with our yeah. words. And it's like, there's a million ways to express it. I think, like, in a way, like, the way I do it, I mean, it's cheating. Like, I've got, mu- <laughs> I've got music to back me up. Like, I dive into people's hearts and emotions through the song, too. Like, I use that as a tool. Whereas when you have nothing but words, to affect people with just words is a very well, then difficult I'm, Then thing. I'm definitely cheating because I also use your music oh, to, no. <laughs> to throw into my words here. I love that, though. I spend my weekdays in my car And the weekends drinking hard in I spend my weekdays in my car and my weekends drinking hard enough for two. Anyway, back to the morbid part. This is kind of a suicide note. Kind of. Again, I haven't deliberately set out to kill myself. Life is actually going pretty well right now. But I've had a lot to drink. I've also been up and down and all day. My Texas comedian friends and I call that Belushi. As in, John Belushi. You know, the guy who died from mixing uppers and downers. So I'm a bit beluched right now. Xanax and Adderall and booze. Who knows where that's going? In fact, another round. I'm getting a little tired, which makes no sense to me with the amount of Adderall I've taken throughout the day. But there is an amazing king-size bed behind me, and it would probably be pretty ridiculous to not take advantage of it while I'm here. When this weekend is over, it's back to the air mattress that I currently call a bed. My original intention was to pop Adderall after Adderall and stay up for three days riding. Doesn't look like that's going to happen. I should probably finish this since it appears so far that I'm committing suicide. Well, I'm not. If I don't wake up tomorrow, oops. This will stay open on my computer so anyone who cares will know it was an accident. I feel the weight of the world on my back. I think you air a lot out in that chapter. Like, it's not one thing. Yeah. You kind of air out like a few different stories where you're like, this is one time, you know, like what you talk about uh, the dry race board on your wall. Yeah. And you woke up to seeing those words. And I think we all have times where we wake up and we scare ourselves. And, and Settle Down, it, it is one of those songs to me, too, where it's like, it's kind of waking up and scaring myself, being like, holy shit, like, what are you doing? You know, like, I think we all need those moments in life where it's kind of scary and... I, I love the way you ended it too, the way you're typing on the keyboard in the hotel room and it, it's kind of like you're, it's like you're dying in a way, you know? Yeah, like, and, and, it, and like when I was going through this the um, last night and t- today yeah. to prep for this, I, I wrote down, this was the first time during this weekend I felt like I was dying. I was like, yeah. oh no, that was that last chapter. I felt like I was dying but too. But I love that. But yeah. it's, it's true. It's exactly. because I was like, popping Adderall and like yeah. when the Adderall got too like shaky I was taking Xanax to chill yeah, out exactly. and then when I thought just fucking go to sleep I would take Ambien yeah, and I then you got the, you mix in the nicotine from cigarettes yeah. and the booze like exactly I did feel like I was yeah. dying <laughs> often yeah. that weekend and, and that's the thing with like people always say to me like especially like the album Reach for the Sun where it's like I repeat themes a lot where it's kind of like yeah like you kind of you kind of feel them come up again and they creep in and out of chapters where it's like, yeah, this, this is the common theme where uh, it, it, keeps, it keeps coming up and 
like I always I, honestly I used to have like an insecurity about like people would always be like you always say this in songs like you say this so many times songs. I'm like that's just how it is I mean like yeah. that's that's what I think at the time like that's like yeah I felt like I was dying or I felt like this and uh, I think it's important to just be honest in those moments and the fact that that chapter feels like it's completely unedited it, just it, a stream of consciousness just going down the line where it's like here's where my head's at here's where my head's wandering it's going here it's going here and then it's like dot 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 kind of at the end of the chapter like I'm so glad that you said that because that's the one chapter that I almost barely edited yeah because of that because that exactly. that is truly like a yeah i might die tonight like you're and, painting a picture you're and i was like yeah. i had all those fucking drugs running through me exactly. and yeah it it real i like it was stream of consciousness yeah. like it i went to bed as soon as i like finished that yeah and didn't know i was if i was gonna wake up the exactly next day. i remember when i was in the army i read an entertainment weekly cover story about heath ledger's death I think it was the year anniversary or something, and they had interviewed several close acquaintances. It was originally speculated that his death was a suicide because he had prescription drugs with him, but it was ultimately declared an accident after mixing the wrong combination of drugs. When I read that, it clicked. Maybe Ledger wasn't trying to kill himself either. Maybe he was so miserable like I was at that time and didn't want to feel anymore or be awake to experience it. Maybe he just wanted to escape his misery at any cost, even if that cost was death. That thought crossed my mind back then, and I still popped more Ambien to sleep away the misery. And when I would wake up, I took more, along with painkillers, over-the-counter cold pills, and booze. Lots and lots of booze. I didn't want to die, but I most definitely did not want to live under those circumstances. I wanted to be somewhere else. And sleep was the only somewhere else I could be. The permanent sleep was kind of appealing. Cause I laid awake in bed And thought it better time I never wanna sleep Cause I found out that the laying down And never waking up I laid awake in bed and thought of better times. I never want to sleep because I've found apathy in laying down and never waking up. So I'm very curious and I'm gonna, you know, go through the three chapters with Daniel yeah, yeah. Summer songs. Uh, about how you, what you thought when you saw how I interpreted your music into what I was dealing with yeah. when I wrote this. I think actually, like especially that chapter, like you did a really good job because it's like, man, settle down. Yeah, like when I wrote that song, I mean, it's being, it's like being at the bottom. It's a, it's about feeling like kind of, you know, useless and worthless and, and suicidal thoughts. And I remember just like you know, I spent my weekdays in my car. Like I remember sleeping in my car and just fucking you know, getting drunk and like being young and just reckless and everything. And, and I think that's what that chapter is to you. Like it's a very reckless chapter and, 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 and it needs to be impactful. Like that. It, yeah. it's almost like it's the Blair Witch tape. It's yeah. like, you're in the woods, you're by <laughs> yourself, you're crying, like in front of camera saying like, this is the last time I'm gonna see anyone, talk to anyone. Like it's a very heart wrenching moment. And I think it's important to give people those very strong like it hurts it hurts to read it's it's a painful thing that's not the morbid part the morbid part is that i could die tonight i've had quite a bit of adderall upper xanax downer and all washed down with scotch and beer the pills started off at work but that's a normal work day for me i need the adderall to get through the day and stay focused and get my work done before certain meetings like the one we had today and if the work starts piling up I have to take some Xanax so I can calm down and avoid anxiety attacks. Then there's the girl. There's always the girl. We had an amazing date two days ago, but every time we hang out, it's amazing. So just thinking about her gets my heart racing. This weekend, I have this hotel room overlooking Times Square, and all I could think about was sharing it with her. More Xanax. So when I got off work, I formulated the plan. And this is just me being stupid. I'm usually pretty cool. I don't need plans and I don't play games. I just need to learn how to slow down. More Xanax. The girl is another story for another time. I just took an Ambien. I've only got a few minutes before I'm incoherently rambling. And a few after that before I pass out in place. Now where were we? So like, you know, this first line that I write in here that I gave my things away. I called the people that I only see on holidays. Yeah. So the I gave my things away part 
you know, whenever anybody puts out the like, watch out for signs of suicide yeah. stuff, that's and the, one of them. It's like, the, the, if your friend's yeah. giving all of his valuables away, he's exactly. probably suicidal. Yeah. Is that where you were coming from? That's then? where I approached it, yeah. And I yeah. literally remember thinking, like, that's like, you know, the sign that things are fucked up, where it's yeah. like, I gave my things away, you know, I call the people one last time that I love, and, you know, it's like, it's gonna be a fucked up year, like, fuck it. You know, like, it's just kind of like, fuck it. Like, I'm I'm out like checking yourself out mentally and yeah it's a rough place to be in and and I could tell you were in that place it's like yeah it's just kind of like fuck them all like I'm done filtering myself like I'm just gonna see what happens like you're just you know taking Adderall taking Ambien all that. I laid awake in bed and thought of better times. I never want to sleep because I found apathy in laying down and never waking up. I wish I could say this is the first time I've considered impending doom. As I said before, I wasn't too excited about life in the army. I do have that whole book written in my head too, so I'll save the bulk of that story. Drugs, booze, suicide attempts, more drugs, more booze, and more suicide attempts for when I'm a better writer and when I'm ready to revisit the worst experience of my life. The relevant part of my short military experience is that I drank more than I ever had before as a South Texas high school or college kid, more than I had in two years as a bachelor in Los Angeles, more than I had in the previous years as a stand-up comedian and music journalist. I was also doing way more drugs than I ever had. It helped that the U.S. Army will pretty much give you any drug you ask for if you know how to ask for it. My ankle hurts. Here's some Percocet. I can't sleep. Here's some Ambien. I'm depressed. Here's some Klonopin. And if you don't have what you liked, someone else did. And pills were the new baseball cards. If you still couldn't find the high you needed, you just walked to the store and looked for it in something you could get over the counter. I was 25 years old when I did my first whip it. I put an aerosol can of computer keyboard cleaner to my mouth and sprayed. It was a 10 to 15 second experience that just made me dizzy and blocked out all the other noise with this echoing sound of a lightsaber pulsing in my head. I wouldn't even call it a high. I decided it wasn't worth the brain cells it killed, and I never did it again. Maybe I did it once more, right then, just to confirm. Triple C's, cold, cough, and congestion pills, usually did the trick if you had eight hours to lie around and stare at the light on a smoke detector. I tried it all, and most of the time mixed with whatever I could get, and washed it down with alcohol. At one point in that mess, my mom's mom was dying back in Texas. I'd be lying if I said that bothered me. She really wasn't a loving grandmother to my brother and me. It was the phone calls from my crying sisters that made me want to be home. My grandmother eventually passed, and I couldn't be there for them. Maybe it wasn't a big deal to anyone, but in my already depressed mind and unhappy life, it just added to the pile. So, I took more pills. I drank more booze, and I slept. I took four Ambien to sleep through the day, and when I woke up, I'd take four more to sleep through the night. Then one day, I got a phone call from my mom. I never called my family because I didn't want to worry them, and I often ignored calls from them, but this time I answered. It was right around the time I read that Entertainment Weekly Heath Ledger article. My mom told me she had a minor heart attack. When I asked when, she said almost a month had passed, but she didn't tell me because she was already worried about me. So I decided to get my life together. Well, I decided not to die anyway. I think I'll settle down one of these days till I catch my breath. I think I'll settle down one of these days. Till I catch my breath, I feel the weight of the world on my back. But I'm not feeling sick to death. Do you remember what inspired this song, Settle Down? I mean, yeah, it was like, yeah, drinking, being reckless, and just fucking... Uh, I remember I was, like, kind of living in my car because my mom kicked me out of her house, like, when I was 18, 19 years old or something. And I was just like... I was a wreck, you know, and I, I would show up just drunk and sleeping in my car and all this stuff. And it is kind of like, I think, uh, the way you portrayed it is just kind of like, I don't know, that kind of reckless chapter of my life, yeah. you know, like almost like in, in later days, like now I wrote that song Way Down, where it's like, sometimes you need a song to kind of capture the recklessness. You, yeah. you, you need to show people 
where your head's at and what it feels like. And there's almost like a Tom Petty free falling type yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. I'm letting go, like, and I'm just letting the world just be what it is and fuck everything. And I think there's something kind of beautiful in those moments. Yeah. And, and I think a lot of people feel those moments, you know, and, and they don't talk about those moments. Where, no, and that's... Where they let go and they're like, you know, just fuck it. Like, yeah, no, yeah. and that's definitely what this is about. And I've, I've told you before we did this um, that, like, that's that's been such a big part of my life for the last, you know, 10 years is trying to help people realize that like it's okay to feel this way yeah a lot of people feel this way and let's just talk about it let's just get it out in the open exactly don't feel bad about it who cares who judges you exactly they just don't understand yeah but there are plenty of people who do understand yeah like us i know exactly uh, um the second time i was spared came after i got out of the army and ended up back in corpus christi going back to college and running a local comedy club with my brother he and I have really only been good at working together for about six months at a time. We had been working together for a little over six months when he just took it over and pushed me out. It was something I'd worked really hard on, something I'd invested a lot of money in, and something that finally made me feel like I had some purpose. And then it was just crushed. It hurt me in a way that I never thought someone in my family could, and he enjoyed it way too much. With the loss of that something, there was the loss of our brotherhood that had weathered divorce, assaults, distance, and differences. It was a pain that lasted weeks for me, but the night it happened was one of the worst feelings I've ever had. I'm lucky that this is something that I got over in a few weeks. I'm extremely lucky that I was even given another day. It happened on a Friday night. I had just gotten home to my apartment after a comedy show at our club. Some comedian friends were in town for the show, and we all had an after party at my apartment, along with some friends and strangers. Doesn't really sound like the setting for a suicide story, does it? Hey, John Belushi and Chris Farley weren't trying to die either. I got a phone call from my brother and, after arguing a little bit, tried to return to the party that I thought would take my mind off all the bullshit. I can't really remember whether or not I told people what was going on. I just remember thinking I couldn't let them see how upset I was. So I drank whiskey. Or I drank some more whiskey. Friday night comedy shows were always stressful to me. Not only did I run the place, but sometimes I also had to host and make sure the comics and audience were taken care of. So, there was already a night full of whiskey and Xanax running through my veins. What would a little more hurt? Maybe nothing, but on top of the cocaine I had done and continued to do by myself in my room, behind a closed door that was usually open to anyone who wanted to partake, I was laying the foundation for an unintentional tribute to some of my comedic favorites. A line here, a shot there, some Ambien once I ran out of Xanax, another line, another shot, and I was out. The next evening, I woke up. I'd slept for 15 hours. It wasn't the first time I'd been careless with my life, but it was the first time I'd written a just-in-case note. It was scribbled in blue marker on a dry erase board in my room, where I usually wrote things like, email publicist about interview, or turn in assignment. That evening, the only thing written was, if I die, it's my brother's fault. It was written in the scariest scribble, like I'd written it with the wrong hand, or like a child just learning to write took his marker and wrote on the wall while mom wasn't looking. I didn't remember writing it. I don't remember writing it. I remember reading it the next day and being very scared. At least a year passed until my brother and I said any words to each other that weren't designed to hurt one another. And honestly, that year was one of the best years of my life. I got healthier, accomplished some things that made me feel better about what I had lost, and I moved on. I wish I could say that's all I needed. I got healthier, not healthy. Come on, who doesn't almost die once or twice a year? I think I'll settle down.